In 1 Chronicles 12, 32, we read about the sons of Ishakar who had understanding of the times. And I want to ask us, do we have understanding of the times? Do we know what is happening in our Western world? We see the collapse of the Christian fabric, the collapse of the Christian worldview. Why is that? Because a foundation has been removed and the structure is collapsing. What foundation? The foundation of the authority of the Word of God. It's about time God's people went out there unashamedly, uncompromisingly, stood on the Word of God and said, this is what it's all about. Proclaim the gospel of Jesus Christ. Show that we can defend our faith. If we start standing on the Word of God, that's what's going to change this nation. Hi, and welcome to Answers News for Monday, April 13th. I'm Avery Foley, and I'm here with Brian Osborne, who's way back there. <laughs> Brian Osborne reporting from the kids' table. But uh, here I am. Glad to be here. Practicing our social distancing, right? right? Yes. Our proper so, six feet, yeah. It's a hey little guys. weird, but hey. <laughs> and then also, of course, um, Dr. Gabriella Haynes. So it's my first episode back since uh, February oh, yes. when I had my Ooh. daughter. So it's nice to be back. Um, I've seen a few pictures of her on <laughs> Facebook, right? I might have got some pictures with me here today. Uh, sure with everyone. No way. Um, big surprise to anyone yeah. who knows me. <laughs> um, but as we're waiting for people uh, to get on here, uh, I wanted to mention, I'm sure a lot of you have been following the fantastic live programs we've been doing. Um, that They've been on all kinds of different topics. Uh, we've got the oh, yeah. live science with uh, Roger Patterson, who, of course, you know from, from the show. He's frequently on here. Which, by the way, um, I've told Roger his theme should be blowing stuff up to the glory of God. <laughs> I think that would work great. I think it's appropriate. Yeah, that would be a great that's a good yeah, idea. That's pretty good. That's pretty much what it is. Um, so th those have been fantastic. Kids especially have been really enjoying um, watching those experiments. Um, and then uh, at noon, we've been doing um, a speaker here in Legacy Hall yep. who's been speaking to an empty um, audience. Yeah. And so we'll have more of those coming this week. Uh, and then yeah. at 3 p.m., We've been doing really fun animal encounters. Uh, my son in particular, he's three and a half, loves the animal encounters. That's awesome. Um, I'm pretty sure he thinks that Ken Ham is cooler being on TV than me, which is really kind of sad <laughs> to me, but that's okay. Um, well, but I don't get to do them with the animals, so I, I can't get cool well, points the thing, for that. The interesting <laughs> thing was when we were doing Answers News, for example, uh, I was trying to show my son Joshua me on TV, and he kept looking at Dr. Georgia. <laughs> so I'm like, it's the same thing with you and Ken, you know? So uh, Yeah. Oh, and then at 7 o'clock, Ken's been doing like behind-the-scenes stuff and interviews, um, and those have been really cool, too. So make sure you uh, tune in and enjoy those and like um, the different Facebook pages so you don't miss those notifications. And Avery, um, I think you're doing your first presentation on Friday. Friday, yep. To yep. the empty audience. To the empty yeah. audience, yeah. yeah. You can bring some <laughs> stuffed bears or something. Yeah. Some stuffed animals, some stuffed dinosaurs yeah. to the edge yeah. Yeah. There right? you go. There you go. Uh, yeah. So I'm excited about that. It'll be it'll be fun to be back uh, to do that and to try my first time ever speaking to oh, an empty yeah. audience. I'm so sure this is great. weird enough having nobody out here but the it cameras is. and then having you over here and then Brian way yeah. back there. It's just yeah. like throwing me off a little. But all right. And I got cute pictures of my baby before we get started on the news articles here. So this is my daughter Lois, who uh. is now six weeks old. Hard to believe. Wow. She's already wow. that old. Um, she was born just before everything went crazy. Um, so yeah. sadly, most of our family hasn't gotten to meet her yet, but oh. uh, hopefully that'll happen soon. And then a picture of all three of my uh. kids together. Beautiful. Beautiful. Lois. She's very popular in our household. Everybody loves her. <laughs> so <laughs> it's been a lot of fun. It's very busy. As I'm sure you can guess just from looking oh. at the picture, the ages of our children, it's been busy, but it's been a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. So That's awesome. Um, all right. So jump in with some fun news items before we get into all the... Uh, craziness of the news. So this one, um, apartment residents use pulley system to retrieve pizza from drivers. We got a video here. Uh, you can see these <laughs> people didn't want to come out of their apartment um, to get their pizza. They want to practice, you know, appropriate social distancing and everything. So they rigged up an entire pulley system for the driver to leave their pizza in. <laughs> and then they left her a tip in the, in the box so they could get their pizza. <laughs> I'm not sure if that's genius or laziness, but it's still pretty <laughs> oh, incredible. Both? Either way, yes. My a little guess bit of both. is they were bored and didn't have anything <laughs> yeah, better probably, to do with probably, time. Sure. They're like, yeah. hey, let's make a pizza delivery uh, pulley system. <laughs> right, yeah. <laughs> but uh, hey. That's pretty awesome. Awesome. It's really cool. I'm, I'm probably going to try that because I live in the third floor. So I think it's, it's a lot of stairs to walk up yeah, and down. That's yeah, that's a good idea, actually. Yeah. By the way, a little side note. Just the other day, my wife and I and our kids were at the house, and we got the doorbell rang. We're like, hide, right? <laughs> and then we looked out the window, we saw Jet's Pizza driving away. And we went to our door. Someone had left us a whole box of pizza and brownies at our door. 
Aww, yeah. that's so you nice. Don't know who it was. Yeah. was, either by accident or on purpose. We got pizza. <laughs> okay, okay. We appreciate let me just that. give me my address now. <laughs> One of your okay. neighbors is like, "Where is our pizza?" <laughs> <laughs> Probably. Or if, if someone did that uh, just to be kind, <laughs> like I need that's to. What I, that's what I figured. Yeah. Yeah, I need to give my address. Okay, <laughs> so you can do the same. <laughs> <laughs> All right, the next one we have here comes from Canada. Um, as you can see, the weather in Canada um, from this video is a little bit different than the weather we have right now, where we have beautiful flowers and green grass. Oh, yeah. Uh, not quite so warm, but uh, apparently, animals are starting to return to more urban areas because there just aren't people out and there's, there's no cars yeah. driving around. Mm -hmm. um, so in, sure. in Calgary, it's deer. There's just like these herds of deer hanging out uh, in the streets. And then in London, uh, apparently there's uh, just deer uh, in London, England, deer there that are Eating coming into the city. Eating plants and sleeping in their yards. <laughs> yeah, and in yeah. Wales, and goats are doing the same goats thing. Goats are taking over. <laughs> Which, by the way, I don't think that's happening here because all of our neighbors, I think they're bored. They're working on their yards. Like everybody's... <laughs> Updating the yards, mm -hmm. painting their fences, their landscaping, or mm -hmm. whatever. A little, yeah. little harder to do that when yeah. there's still snow on the ground. Um, <laughs> That's like true. Calgary, That's fair. But... Yeah, yeah. Is there ever not snow on the ground in Canada? <laughs> oh, we, <laughs> yeah, exactly. we, we have two seasons. We have, <laughs> we have winter and construction. Those are our two seasons. So. <laughs> That's pretty good. All right, so getting into the real news here. This one comes from LifeSite News. Almost half of Americans see coronavirus as a wake-up call from God, according to a recent poll. Uh, so this poll found that uh, about 44% or so of Americans see this whole pandemic that's going on, everything that's associated with it, as a wake-up call from God to turn back to faith or as a sign of coming judgment um, from God on this nation, which is um, interesting that that many people are kind of looking at it mm -hmm. from sure. that perspective. Yeah. Well, and we were talking about earlier, looking at the poll itself, it stretches across basically all demographics. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. From young to old, from Christian to secular, different mm -hmm. percentages. Twenty five percent high. of secular Americans, yeah. mm -hmm. uh, which was which seems like really high, but it's like people are really looking at this and it, it's really scary, it's really concerning, and um thankfully are thinking, Okay, maybe this is something that, you know, we need to really actually think about and think about mm -hmm. um, God and what he could be doing and asking sure us to do. And so. we were talking earlier about how I think right now, especially in our American culture, we've been forced to slow down. Mm -hmm. Like you have to stop. You have to, you don't have your distractions as much. We don't have sports to pull Unless us away. Kids, we don't have our jobs or kids. <laughs> uh, kids, yeah, keep us busy. No doubt about that. Right. But, um, but you know, yeah. <laughs> so all those, a lot of those distractions are gone. Mm -hmm. So all those mm -hmm. questions that people can push aside, they're, they're, kind of, they're up. popping up more and more and more. Mm -hmm. So looking for answers. Of course, we know that God's word has the answers to all those questions right. and much more, right? Absolutely. And we were talking mm -hmm. too, I think along with that, uh, I think as people read the Bible and where should they start? Well, at the beginning, right? Mm -hmm. Get the gospel in context, but as they read it, they'll have questions. Well, yeah. the Bible is true. What about evolution? What about the age of earth? What about dinosaurs? Mm -hmm. What about how do you define what marriage is from the Bible? And we got answers to all that. And I really think that our ministry can be such a great help as people are uh -huh. searching for those yeah. answers, they got more time to search for them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, right? so yeah. Be, for sure be sharing um, the different broadcasts that we're doing Absolutely. Um, with your family and friends. Um, get yourself equipped. Go on our bookstore, look at some of the resources we have there so you can be equipped to talk to other people and strike up those conversations. Ask them, you know, um, how are you feeling about this? Maybe even talk about this poll and be like, Absolutely. hey, you yeah. know, 44% of segue. Americans think this is a wake-up call from God. What do you think about that? Yeah, and yeah. Start conversations. It's a good opportunity to share the gospel. Yeah, you know, absolutely. And, and I think that we as Christian, we, we we can use the whole situation to share more about the gospel mm -hmm. and uh, yeah, yeah, it's but, wake up call. And you think about so many people right now, they have so many fears, right? Yeah. About life. Their whole life has been turned upside down. Mm -hmm. Maybe the fear mm -hmm. of imminent death, anxiety, my life has changed. What do I do? And they're looking mm -hmm. for answers. And as Christians, you know, we can look at our, we can look at the, what's happening around the world and we can be, yeah, that's not good, but we've got a yeah. permanent hope in Christ right. Absolutely. that we and just peace. celebrated, yeah. right? Yeah. And we got that peace. Yeah. And so we don't fear death the mm -hmm. way yeah. the world is. I don't want to die, but I know I will. And I know that's not the end. Right. Uh -huh. right? Yeah. And yeah. so we have a, we a hope, here. a living mm -hmm. hope, and it's mm -hmm. rooted in a real word of God that is clear yeah. and it can be defended. Mm -hmm. And so when we yeah. show that hope, uh -huh. Man, that's attractive. It's contagious. <laughs> yeah, right? it is. It yeah. Really, you know, and so and it gives us a chance to share the gospel, like mm -hmm. you said. And the way that mm -hmm. the way that we we put the way that we have our hope um, is it's gonna makes us react to things like that. Yeah. You know, especially mm -hmm. in chaos, when you have different worldviews, it's gonna change the way that you're gonna react to everything. So having the 
the gospel, mm-hmm. the hope of Christ, uh, give us the peace, you know, mm-hmm. uh, of saying that, yes, it's, it's a wake-up call, but we also were talking about every, everything in this curse word That's world right. um, yeah. is um, it's a wake-up call. You yeah. know, yeah. diseases, um, um, accidents, people dying. That's all a wake-up call from God. And it's because he's merciful. He's merciful and graceful to give uh, a chance to always be looking at him and, and uh, remembering him. So, mm-hmm. yeah. Yeah, and as you're looking to answer people's questions and really deal with that um, at, at a foundational level of this is, you know, man's word versus God's word and this, you know, really looking at that. Um, we have a new resource from Brian, actually. Oh, yeah. um, quick answers to social issues. You want to hold that one up there, Gabby? Mm-hmm. Thanks, um, Gabby. Really, really, really great book. I got a chance to read it before um, it went to the publisher, and it's fantastic. It I really encourage well. people to yeah. take a look at that. It can really help Praise you God. to think through some of these issues and how to talk to other people about them, which can be really important during this time when people are, are, are looking to, to the Bible, looking to God for answers to their questions. So um, be sure to check that one out. And you're doing a Facebook Live with Ken tomorrow night, correct? Yep, tomorrow Talking night. Talking about that book. Yeah. Um, so We're you'll want to make sure you it. tune in for that Praise at 7 God. o'clock Eastern yeah. time uh, tomorrow. Um, so Similar to that one, this next item, coronavirus outbreak spurs record Bible purchases. People are looking for hope. Um, so thankfully, people, you seeing this, maybe this is a wake-up call from God, are apparently buying a lot of Bibles, which is really fantastic. Praise the Lord. Uh, yeah. Two mm-hmm. different Bible publishers are saying one has seen a 143% increase since the same time last year wow, in Bible purchases, and the other mm-hmm. one found a 62% um, increase since the same time last year. I'm not a math major, but that's good. That's really good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. so, we, like that much. we like those numbers. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah. again, people are really searching for answers, are really searching mm-hmm. for hope, and God's word is where they're going yeah. to find it. So be encouraging people um, to dust off the Bibles they may already have on their shelves read or to, to order one, buy one for someone, you know, Absolutely. Mm-hmm. encourage them to read it. Another resource we have um, is this book here called Begin, um, which sometimes when people, if they get the Bible and they open it up, they don't know where to start. They don't know what to read. They don't understand the, the uh, you know, the whole story of scripture, how everything um, kind of fits together. And it can be kind of a little bit confusing um, sometimes. So Begin is a great resource for people who are brand new to the Bible to help them get the sort of the big picture yep. view of scripture and answer some of the common questions people have um, and really lays the gospel out from the very beginning in Genesis right through scripture Mm -hmm. um, through to the to the message of the gospel so I encourage people to to consider maybe getting some copies of that and and giving them to people Mm -hmm. um, if we can just encourage the Christians out there too on all these questions as we deal with the gospel social issues scientific issues there are answers and yeah. they're not that hard. You don't have to be a PhD to defend your faith. Mm-hmm. Right? Sure. If you've sure. got one, praise God. Use it for his glory. <laughs> Amen. Mm-hmm. But to defend your faith, what you have to do is trust the Bible. Yeah. And we've got to mm-hmm. recognize that the, the hope we have is a hope not rooted in some nebulous concept of God. The hope we have is rooted in the real revealed word of God mm-hmm. in Absolutely. the Bible and the promises mm-hmm. in that word fulfilled in Christ, ultimately in the resurrection of Christ after defeating death. And so mm-hmm. it's rooted in that real book. That's, a, that's mm-hmm. actually put in place in real history. We stand on that and we can defend our faith. Yeah, which yesterday was an amazing day, Easter. It was. Yeah, yes, it's a, yeah. It's a, it was good. It was a, it very was a good weird reminder. Easter. But it was, yeah, it was, it was. Good, though. <laughs> but a very good reminder yeah. who God is, who Amen. Jesus is, and that he, he died on the cross to save us. Mm-hmm. And it's just, it just amazing uh, to see that even with this all chaos that we have been through, it's just so good to know that we don't belong here. You know, this, this is, is not just, our home. This is not our home. Yeah. You know, yeah. and it's an it amazing reminder mm-hmm. that Jesus died on the cross, but he, um, he, he rose, he, he rose yeah. and he is on the throne. He's on the Absolutely. throne and he's mm-hmm. Lord and Savior and um, he's sovereign over everything. I so, got to say this mm-hmm. one more thing. I said it on one of the videos at the three o'clock for the devotionals over the weekend, but I just love the saying, I stole it from somebody else. But when Jesus rose from the dead, death died, mm-hmm. right? And those who put their faith in Christ yeah. share in that eternal victory. Yeah. Yeah. I just love that thought because Don't it's true. Mm-hmm. And so I think Absolutely, it's so relevant yeah. as we talk about yeah. these issues, right? Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. All right. Our next one is a rather lengthy one here from uh, coming from CNN. Ancient humans are having a moment. Here are the fascinating new things we've learned this week about our ancestors. So this is talking about several finds that kind of all were published at around the same time um, related to supposed human evolution and our supposed human um, ancestors. And uh, the the big picture perspective on this, because there's a whole lot of little details, we can't get into all that because there's too much to go on and we don't have that much time. Um, But the big picture basically is everything that you thought you knew about 
human evolution is wrong. They've had to change a whole bunch of different timelines, and they've had to change all this different stuff based on new interpretations of various um, pieces of evidence that they're looking at. We've heard this same thing before. We right? have. We have. Yeah. Every it. week. It's pretty much every week, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. Truly. Yep. That's not yeah. an exaggeration. That's reality. It's, no, it's, it's it really reality. Is. Yeah. 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 The, is. the first one is talking about um, Homo erectus, um, which here's a picture of the particular um, fossil that they were looking at to talk about this. And they've realized, okay, um, Homo erectus, which hadn't been found in, um, it, it hadn't really been found in this area before. Well, now they found it in, in South Africa and they're like, oh, this was living at the same time as these other um, homonym species, they call them, but really they're just apes. apes. Yeah. They're, they, they refer to them as another type of human, but mm -hmm. it's Australopithecus, which is just an ape, mm -hmm. uh, and Paranthropus, which yeah. is just an ape. Um, so, or they're just a human. Um, like yeah, Homo erectus. Homo erectus, yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. exactly. just a, a, a different variety, um, uh, variation within um, humans. humanity. Yep. So not really um, that surprising. And it, when you look at this, it's really interesting oh. because the choice of words that they use really influences how the reader is reading this. They don't say that these are apes. They, they refer to them as other types of humans or this term homonyms to try and give this human feel to something that isn't human. That's an ape because it, it fits in with their evolutionary story. And before we dive into that, can I read this sentence on the second paragraph and just notice the connotations to what they're saying here uh, as they get into this subject. Timelines are being pushed back. In other words, our original timelines mm -hmm. were wrong. Mysteries are being solved. Things we didn't know before, now we understand. Details are being revealed. Things we didn't know, we now know. And guys, give it another week, and they'll say the same thing about <laughs> this data, right? And so we got to keep that in mind. It's all based on a worldview interpretation. Separate the facts from the fictional interpretations mm -hmm. based on the story of evolution. Be sure to separate those two things as you go through this stuff. As you do that, it becomes a lot easier to parse this out. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. I think yeah, you had some thoughts on yeah, some one, of this stuff. One thing that is very interesting when we are reading those papers, because they just put everything, all the, all the information together, they give it to us. But we need to check the details. Even in this paper, this article is saying <laughs> that um, the aus australopsine, uh, the, 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 the skull, the brain, is similar to modern apes because the place uh, where that part of the brain is, oh, yeah. is different. It's in the front of the skull, and in human, it's in the back. Um, mm -hmm. So even the article itself is, sh is showing that what they're saying, that it's, uh, it's kind of human, it's actually an ape. And mm -hmm. it's important for us to, to know that when you find a fossil, you don't find a fossil complete, beautiful, all there. No, you find pieces. For example, mm -hmm. for Lucy, yep. um, the reason that they, they think that it's a, a hominid, it's because they found the knee, and the knee, uh, it's a human knee, uh, but the, that knee was found one year earlier, 240 feet lower in the strata, not with the rest of the fossil, yep. close to four miles, <laughs> around four miles away from the rest of the fossils. So it's a pretty big assumption to make that it belongs to the Australopithecus yeah, uh -huh. Lucy. So, so he yes. didn't need his knee. It was really far away. Yeah. The knee, yeah. <laughs> that was for Bodhi. You're welcome. All right. <laughs> Good try. Good yeah. Try, so, so the thing is, when you find a fossil, when you read a paper about a fossil, you need to understand that they have a lot of interpretation. They have how they, how they conclude that. And when you go to study the method and you see those things, and that's something very common to happen. It's not sure. rare. It's very common when I'm studying dinosaurs and everything. You always see, and it's a funny one, uh, there's a dinosaur that I'm studying that they put together some bones that they found in this layer and the other bones that they found in these layers. But even in a secular uh, worldview, there are a difference of 8 million years sure. wow. yeah. between them. So it's just like they found those bones in different layers, they put them together, and they brought up like a new genus, new species of a dinosaur. So things like that we need to have in mind. Uh, for example, another thing, the pelvis of Lucy it was uh, modified in a lab. They broke it um, to, to shape in a way that it looked like human. So we yeah. need to have that in mind and not just read mm -hmm. as it's true. But we also need, as you're saying, kind of recognize that they're approaching this present day evidence with a worldview. Mm -hmm. They assume evolution is true. They assume right. man's ideas about the past are a better starting point than God's clear revealed word. Mm -hmm. So bear in mind, guys, they've got faith. Everybody does. Yes. The question yes. is, where yeah. do you put your faith? Right. Mm -hmm. And the ideas of mm -hmm. fallible men who weren't there, who don't know everything, who make mistakes all the time, updating their data like here, 
or mm-hmm. in God's infallible perfect word who was there and tells, tells us what he did in creation and what happened mm-hmm. from there. Where do you put your faith? But they assume evolution is true. And so as you read these sort of articles, as we do again and again and again, what you'll see is this. Here are the facts, the bone fragments, and then they give you a really detailed story mm-hmm. they present as absolute truth based in their worldview as they interpret those present-day facts. Mm-hmm. Separate the story from the actual tangible mm-hmm. evidence. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's important for us to do that. For sure. All right, this next one comes from New Scientists. Our approach to COVID-19 can also help tackle climate change. Uh, so big shock, climate change is coming up in the discussion um, regarding the current uh, situation going on around the world. Everything always has to come back to climate change, right? Um, even though they say in the article, there is no established link between COVID-19 and climate change. Whoa, so. whoa, 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 what? <laughs> even like, though there's not. Like the one thing in the entire <laughs> yes. world from the secular perspective that's not related not to climate, climate change. change. One thing, mm-hmm. we've got one thing. <laughs> By the end of this COVID-19 uh, chaos, they probably they'll find a link. Yeah, they're going to find a link. Find yeah. Yeah. Yes, that's true. <laughs> uh, but the article talking about um, how it starts out by saying we've known that 2020 was going to be a milestone year when it comes to fighting climate change. Um, We really have to radically reverse everything starting now or else it's going to be, you know, there's going to be no changing, no going back, no fixing things. Um, Which is standard. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, um, and they talk about how the average global temperature has already risen by one degree Celsius. We can't, we have to make sure it doesn't go by up, up another half degree past 1.5 degrees Celsius. How are we going to do that? Well, we can take some clues from how we've been combating coronavirus. The government's put all these super strict, um, you know, measures in place to stop the spread, to, you know, slow the curve, all that kind of stuff. Maybe we need to be doing the same things to fight uh, climate change. Um, and so that's kind of where they're going with their, with their thinking here in this, in this article. It seems like they kind of want to continue some of the policies put in place mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. during these lockdowns across the U.S. Mm-hmm. and around the world. And make sure uh, that no money that's going towards helping businesses recover from this goes towards um, businesses oh, yeah. that are using, uh, the, sorry, not businesses that are using, but businesses that are producing um, these different energies that they don't particularly like. So they're targeting with their ideology, right? Mm-hmm. It's also interesting to note at the end, the very last paragraph, it says this, Moments of crisis are always moments of opportunity. Mm -hmm. In other words, never let a good crisis go to waste, (laughs) right? (laughs) Use it to further your agenda. And by the way, if you're curious about climate change, we have tons of wonderful articles Mm -hmm. on our website, all that in great detail, some good videos you can watch Mm -hmm. on there on YouTube. Check those out. Great biblical answers. I got one in my book on quick answers to social issues, but there are a lot of answers. We do have good, sound Mm -hmm. answers. We truly do. That refute this sort of secular thinking. Yeah, this whole panic driven craziness um, that's often coming from um, those who are climate change alarmists. Um, and I, mean, well, I was going to say, again, it goes back to worldview. Yep. If you have the wrong assumptions mm-hmm. about the past, it gives you the wrong conclusions about both the present right. and the future. And that's why the secularists are so wrong on this issue. They're wrong assumptions about mm-hmm. unseen history. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because it, it's interesting. We have, a, we have another article later on that we may or may not get to this episode. If we don't, we'll get to it next week, talking about um, climate change in Antarctica. And it's like yeah. the radical, <laughs> radical climate change they're talking about there, like the ocean 20 degrees Celsius. Um, I Average temperatures much, much higher than today. Much, much higher. As far as they're in Antarctica. About, yeah, right? 1.5 mm-hmm. degrees. So yeah. even in their own worldview, they've had this, uh, this crazy radical climate change in the past that obviously was not caused by humans because in their worldview, they don't mm-hmm. believe that humans existed at the time. Um, but the Earth so still sustained itself. Right, yeah. Even so in those radical this, changes. Right. This even in their worldview. Yeah. Within, yeah. Their, within their worldview. Mm-hmm. Um, we look at it from, from a biblical perspective. We understand that God designed our planet. He designed our climate. Yep. Um, and he, he has commanded us to be fruitful and multiply, to have dominion mm-hmm. over his creation in a way that brings him glory and is for, for our good, caring for what Amen. he has made. So we need to obviously care for what God has made. We have right. a, the creation mandate to do so, but in a way that um, is not going to be harmful to humanity, that a lot of these measures they would want to put in place would be very harmful to humanity, mm-hmm. particularly the poor. Yep. Um, so we, we need to be thinking through those issues well, um, and that's in a, a really good biblical point. way. A really good point, Avery. And you know, biblically, here's a, here's a neat thing. As Christians, we have a good reason to care about right. the yeah. world and Why the environment. Why do they have that reason? Right? Here's the question, right? <laughs> Why do the secularists care what happens right. to the earth, to this earth or humanity? Right. Right, if yeah. we're just rearranged Poscom, a random cosmic accident, who mm-hmm. cares what happens to us or the earth? We are stardust. The, we're just stardust right? and we'll yeah. go away <laughs> and be replaced. So biblical worldview, we have good mm-hmm. answers to secular mm-hmm. worldview is standing on thin air. Yeah, and that, just shows, for their worldview, that just shows the inconsistence um, that they have. They're borrowing our worldview. Exactly. And using to mm-hmm. do that. So at the same time, they're saying that 
God doesn't exist and his word is not true. They're using God's word to um, support their ideas. They're using the Bible to try to argue against the, the Bible. Bible. Yeah. Right. That, yeah. The fact they can argue at all shows that they're wrong. Right. Which is so fun to watch that unfold if you really uh -huh. kind of follow it through. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, this next one. A protester arrested yes. at New York City COVID-19 field hospital run by anti-gay evangelist. So if you're wondering <laughs> who the anti-gay evangelist is. Sounds that would so be, negative, doesn't sounds it? Sounds so negative. That's Franklin mm -hmm. Graham. Yeah. Um, so Samaritan's Purse, uh, probably a lot of you have seen this in the news, has set up a field hospital there in New York City to help deal with the healthcare crisis going on due to COVID-19 uh, there in New York City. And instead of being welcomed with you know, open arms to the yeah. city to come and help people and care for people. They're running into some people who are not so happy that they're there, like this um, protester, because of their views on biblical marriage and saying that marriage is for a man and a woman and that they dare to have their staff and their volunteers yeah. sign a statement of faith saying that they agree with the tenets of faith that the Samaritan's Purse holds. Mm -hmm. um, so this activist came and um, actually went past the barriers where he was not allowed to go. That was a restricted area and then wouldn't leave. So they're trying to plant a rainbow flag in the dirt mm -hmm. um, and wouldn't leave when they asked him to leave. So the police had to come and escort him off of the property. Um, but he was, he was there saying that they have no business being in New York City, that they are the virus, even though wow. they're there to help people and not to hate anyone or well, discriminate mm. against anyone. Or. And a couple of things, Samaritan's Purse run by Franklin Graham, they're there on their own dime. Yeah. Correct? Yeah. Uh, yeah. They are they're they're forking money. out the money to be a blessing. And by the way, mm -hmm. kudos to them. This is a Absolutely. great witness of Christ. Mm -hmm. Even in the midst of them being attacked for their beliefs, they're still mm -hmm. serving people to the glory of God, yeah. which I absolutely love. Being persecuted, love. They really they're are. still loving. They are. With yeah. Christ's love. And by the way, guys, if we go back to the title, we talked about this earlier uh, together mm -hmm. before mm -hmm. the show started. Notice even the title. You see the bias that's just dripping, mm -hmm. yes. even in the title. Yeah. Anti-gay evangelist, <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. yeah. And so literally from the very beginning, anti-gay, they're against something, they're mean, they're negative. Mm -hmm. And please, mm -hmm. I think part of what we do as a ministry in this particular show is help people to understand, okay, to interpret things rightly from a biblical mm -hmm. perspective right. and to recognize worldviews that are in play. And please recognize mm -hmm. this title it's not neutral, no. right? Yeah. They have a The reporter view. picked it very specifically yes. to make a point. Why not uh -huh. pro-biblical mm -hmm. marriage pro evangelists? Love. What about pro-love evangelists who uh -huh. loves mm -hmm. all people because he recognizes uh -huh. they're all made in God's image, image and yeah. he knows how they work best, wants them to mm -hmm. know the truth of God's word and gives them the gospel. No, no, anti. So this is done on purpose. Be aware of that. Don't miss that. Mm -hmm. Read yeah. with a critical mm -hmm. biblical worldview as you read through this stuff. And then, dear Christian, I also want to point out, you mentioned this, Avery, but just to really just hear what they're saying here. Yeah. The writer of this article says that people are upset in New York because Franklin Graham has these, he has these controversial beliefs. What are the controversial beliefs? Well, he believes uh, what the Bible says about marriage in one man, one woman for life, that there's only male and female. female. His controversial beliefs are the Bible. Mm -hmm. Yep. And guys, here's mm -hmm. what we better realize and grab a hold of more and more in our secular culture. If you want to stand on God's word, you better know what you believe and why. Because more and more, even just plain biblical teaching is controversial. It won't be tolerated. Oh, yeah. You're going to stand, you better it's be true. on the rock that is mm -hmm, God's word. Mm -hmm. That's what the resources are all about. And yes, we need to do yeah. just that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's interesting as you read through, it isn't just this one activist who's upset about this. Yeah. Um, the mayor. As you read through, you read through the mayor of mm -hmm. New York City said that he called the views of Samaritan's Purse troubling, troubling and said his administration will monitor the situation to ensure there is no discrimination. I'm very concerned to make sure this is done right. He's this quoting from him. But if this is done right, we need all the help we can get. Yeah. So they're going to waste precious personnel and manpower during this time of crisis to monitor Samaritan's Purse, who are there to help. help to make sure that they're not discriminating in helping when they have no history of actually discriminating and saying, oh, we're not going to help you because you don't believe the same thing we do or anything like that. Mm -hmm. right. they, they're willing to help everyone. And, and Franklin Graham affirmed that throughout the article that they, they're well, that's what they all, they've always done. People they are always going to help. Uh -huh. yeah. um, it, so it's really sad to see and very inconsistent uh, of the mayor to, to be like, we, we desperately need help, but we really, mm -hmm. we're begrudgingly going to accept your help because right. your views are very troubling, but we really do need the help. So mm -hmm. it's... And Franklin Graham, he's the one being discriminated. And Christians in general. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. So, 
And it, I think we did uh, some weeks ago something that happened in Europe when he went there and he was yes. oh, yeah. still there. Yeah. Right. And like all the discrimination. Mm -hmm. uh, when uh, the venues that were supposed to host right. his conference were all Wasn't he shut down in New York as well? Um, because uh, that wouldn't surprise me. I, I think don't, he was. Yeah, I'm not sure. Yeah. yeah. I know we've talked several times about him and, and different issues mm -hmm. regarding. And, and one other thing really quickly. Guys, please notice as you see this article and other ones like it, this guy who protested the mayor's comments, notice they're not being neutral. Notice mm -hmm. how intolerant they're being to any other worldview than their own. Yes. He's basically saying, you either agree with me or you're immoral. Maybe we'll take your help because we need it, but you're actually immoral. Now, based my question to them is, based on what standard? Right, yeah. Right? Yeah. Because if there's mm -hmm. no God, no absolute standards, right. then morality is relative. And so notice they're being intolerant, and then also they're being bigoted. They're being bigoted towards those with a different belief with no real good foundational reason. Mm -hmm. Every mm -hmm. second of the worldview falls back to that by default because they have to. Uh -huh. They have no foundation. And again, they borrow from the Christian worldview. So they're being bigoted. They're being intolerant. And those are the staples of their own professed worldview. Mm -hmm. They're so hypocritical mm -hmm. in their own secular ideology because you must be if you abandon God's word. Right. Every other worldview falls apart at its foundation. And we see it here again. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. All right, well... Do this last one really quick, just because it ties in and well with this one oh, yeah. um, before we, we wrap up here. Eight Charlotte abortion protesters arrested under New, uh, North Carolina COVID-19 ban on mass gatherings. So this is talking about a group of people who are outside of an abortion clinic in Charlotte, North Carolina, that remains open during the crisis um, to, you know, speak to some of the women as they were going in and, and, and just protest uh, that the clinic is open during this crisis and that abortion is happening um, at all. Because you um, can't go to church. Yeah. You can't even, in some states, you can't even drive into a church parking lot, but you mm -hmm. can go to an abortion clinic. Yeah, yes. yeah. yeah. So, uh, and, and because of that, there were about 50 protesters originally, and then the police showed up and asked them to disband, and most of them left. There were about 12 left, and then the police started handing out tickets, and then it got down to about eight people, um, including the Benham brothers. Some of our viewers may be familiar with, with them. Um, they're fairly well-known Christians. And uh, they, they, I watched a video from the Benham brothers yeah, talking this about this because um, the article yeah. that we were, we were reading here didn't mention this. But um, so the, in the video, they're, prop, they're practicing pro, you know, proper social distancing. They're standing six feet apart um, and, and in what they're doing. Um, and they pointed out that there's a park not too far away that they say there were all kinds of people at the park that were hanging out, that were you know, being outdoors with their families. We're not practicing proper social distancing. And the police were not over there um, you know, doing anything with the people in the park. Instead, they chose to come over to the abortion clinic um, and the people who were standing outside of the abortion clinic, which it seems to kind of point towards a bias um, right. on someone's part um, of, a little bit. of, of those, these Christians who are, <clears throat> who are standing against the killing of children. Um, and, and it just, again, points to what's happening in our society where um, Christians are often being picked out and targeted right. for what we believe um, based on God's word yep. um, very indiscriminately against, um, against other things. And it's it's sad and to see that happening. We, we expect it because scripture warns us this is going to happen, but sure. it's still sad to see the The reason they were doing that is because they wanted to save lives. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you we're know? so, like, the oh, government's yeah. supposedly so concerned about saving lives right now, yeah. but they don't care about the lives of the unborn. And that's incredibly mm -hmm. inconsistent to be like, right. we're going to do all these, um, these different measures to try and protect lives, but we don't care if women are going into an abortion clinic right. and, and having their own children killed. Like, it's super inconsistent that they're picking some lives over others and valuing those lives. And also notice the bias in the article and what's not reported. Mm -hmm. Like you yeah, tell me yeah. the details from the video about how the park was just down the road. People were all gathered together, not mm -hmm. being dispersed. And they were, and then at the protesting at the abortion clinic, they were spaced out by six feet, according to the video shown by mm -hmm. the Benham brothers. Yeah. At least but, when there was that many, that few people there. But yeah, but you don't yeah. hear any of that no. in the in, article. Yeah. Not mentioned so, at all. Again, the bias is in what's written and what's not written mm -hmm. and how it's written. Right. So yeah. be sure you're thinking critically, biblically as you read through stuff like mm -hmm. this. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. And that's all the time that we have for today. Right. Um, but Answers News will be back again next Monday, but we'll have all kinds of different live streams between now and then. So make sure that you're, uh, you tune in as a family for those. Uh, and uh, we'll, we'll see you later at the next broadcast. Blessings.